Hello, everyone. I am Oracle Araya, and I'm here with my husband, psychic medium, trans channel, Riz Mirza. Hi, everyone. And, and I have a series of interviews that I post on my YouTube channel, United Star Seeds Connections Group. But today is a very special interview where I am going to be talking to my husband, and my co-worker, because we worked together as shamans for the right. last 10 years, and well, I'm going to be asking a series of questions, and I am going to help everyone out there get to know who Riz is a little bit better and what we do. And I think it's very fitting for the beginning of 2021 that we kind of touch base with everybody because there's been so much going on. And since we really lead lives that are very spiritual and very connected in the metaphysical world, you know, some people don't know exactly what we do. So this is a great opportunity. I wrote a list of questions. Oh. So I'm going to get started. Are you ready, Riz? Yes, because I don't know the questions that you wrote. <laughs> I know. I told you to surprise me, so don't Here surprise me too much. <laughs> okay, so I got to put my glasses on. Here we go. Okay, so number one, for those tuning into you right now who have never met you, mm -hmm. can you please introduce yourself? Well, I'm Riz Mirza, and what I do, commonly what people call me, and my skill set is that I'm a psychic medium. I'm also a trans channel, a shaman, and I teach the principles that all of those modalities or abilities teach to me, I teach to you. But, you know, it's interesting because we were having this conversation a year ago and we were, you know, as healers showing their work, we were looking at our website and looking at the, the cards and um, the book that came out last year, The Nine Keys, and thinking about how to share that with people. And this long title of Psychic Medium, Trans Channel and Shaman and do you remember what I said to you? And that's why we put the cover of the book as a key that I'm actually a, a locksmith. I'm a humble locksmith. <laughs> because what, what do you do when you are locked out of your house? What is your house? It's where you feel comfortable, safe, peaceful. It's where you rest your head. It's where you create yourself. And when you lock yourself out of your home, who hasn't done that? You call the locksmith. And so the locksmith's job is to come along while you're frustrated and then take the lock off the door and then help you get back in where you'd like to go. I'm not there to show you how to get back or get into my house. I'm here to show you how to get back into where you are. And then you decide how you want to change things. So I'm a soul locksmith is what I like to call myself. So you are working in the 3D, very practical way that's what you're doing with people you're working on the 3d plane but because you're a psychic medium trans channel you also tune in you also have this ability to connect to the guides in a way that's been documented over the history of our work so mm -hmm. how does that play in to what you do well when we're talking about metaphysical if you want to call it metaphysical study i don't like to use the word phenomenon because we can apply that to anything really uh, something that you, it seems mysterious to you can be a phenomenon. But psychic work or metaphysical work, that can be an ability that many, many, many people have in what they do. So it can be that you are empathic, which some people are, but don't use it as a service for other people because they haven't developed it yet. Some people do tarot and their intuitiveness or their connection to that which you cannot see. Metaphysical means that you currently cannot see it or touch it in a sense. It's beyond your current physical capacity to perceive. So who are psychics? What actually are they? Well, traditionally it's been the, the crystal ball reader or the fortune teller telling you what's going to happen or look out on that particular day. And that was for the most part of what we come to know as psychic work in the past the idea of what psychics are. A psychic is one who tunes into what's happening into your life. So we have a psychic, we have a medium, we have a channel. So let me just, I'd like to take this moment to break that down. And what are these three terms? For me, a psychic is tuning into various aspects of your life. And whatever they give you in a reading, usually a reading's about an hour, is what they're supposed to tell you within that time frame. They allow themselves to sort of be like a, a helicopter that is 
flying above where you are. You're the car driving along the road. They are in the helicopter. So obviously their vision extends. So their vision ex is extending to where the roads are. There usually aren't a million roads for you in your life. Your path is usually one of just a few. And you know what those paths are. You have a pretty good idea of them. So the psychic is able to say, all right, I know where you want to go. You probably should continue straight here or make a left here. Now, that person who's sitting in the car doesn't have the vantage point because they're behind the wheel. They're focused on the acceleration and the braking and the cars next to them and what's just coming up right in front of them. But when you have a vantage point of far ahead, the turn that the driver may take might be very different than the advice that the psychic is giving. Because a psychic is up here saying, well, you want to go to the ocean. And I know that you feel like there's a cool breeze coming from this way, but actually you need to make a right, go over through this forest and over this mountain and make two rights and a left. And there you will experience what you're wanting to experience. So these abilities have been documented in some form or another as far back as we can remember. And we will go back to shamanism or when we were in tribes and there was a person who was able to connect to the events happening. So it's a very long and detailed discussion about what psychic phenomenon is or what psychic work is. So I like to talk about what are you doing, we use the word spiritually, to shift into the version of yourself. So now psychic work, which I'm starting to see happen and what, what I do and I've been doing for close to 15 years is how do you take this metaphysical, the metaphysical principles of creating a reality connecting to the energies that are guiding you around you, which we call the spirit guides. And then what you mentioned practically, right? 3D world. Then how do you live this? Well, for me, that is what shamanic practice really is. So you're learning to take what could be considered metaphysical, the understanding of how your beliefs and your patterns and how you chose to be here as yourself. Those people were watching, you chose that gender, that background, that basic structure of your life, who your parents were, that's the blueprint. Now the blueprint is not the complete design of the house, is it? The blueprint does not tell you where the couch is gonna be or what color the walls are gonna be or the theme or the vibe of the house. It just gives you the basic structure and where the doors and windows are, where the light comes in. So you're choosing this blueprint. And so what I teach is how to look at reality differently. Some people who come to me are very interested in the psychic part of my work. Now, they think it's just a psychic part. And then they say, I just want to work in the shamanic way and help me transform. But everything I do is psychic. I've been this way since I was seven years old. Mediumship is how it began. So a medium, which thanks to television, people really know what mediumship is, connecting to someone who's crossed over doesn't mean that they're psychic necessarily. Then there is the channeling. So the channeling is what I do at my circle of light, which has now been going on well over a decade, close to 2000 in-person circles. And those of you who have been to my circle know the potency and the power of the wisdom that comes through. When I channel, I leave my body, I go into a deep meditative state. It's like falling asleep. And the spirit guides come through me and speak. And the the energy of that is very powerful, it's potent, and the messages are always about getting clarity on where you really are. So what does that mean, where you really are? You may think it's a really tough time, but then when you drop in with yourself and you hear the wisdom and the insights that come from these kinds of teachings, you begin to understand you're exactly where you're supposed to be, and what are the resources and tools that are around you? to be able to utilize for yourself currently, not what's out there that you, you don't know if you're ever gonna get it. So I don't remember exactly what the question was. <laughs> Great, no, this is exactly what we wanted to hear was a okay. breakdown of exactly what you do in your sessions and mm -hmm. how you use your talents. So you covered it, it's good. Let me go to number two. So, for 2021, especially because of how things have been for all of us individually and, you know, for shamanic teachers is a little bit different. And for spiritual teachers, we're on like a little bit of a different path as we are circumventing through what's being co-created right now on the planet. 
But why is shamanic work important now more than ever in 2021? So the definitions of what shamanic work for me is they're far wider than the traditional definition of a shaman. So shamans traditionally are those who are skilled in certain arts and practices that vary from culture to culture. They usually use tools of the earth, whether it is plant medicine or whether it is stones or whether it is um, the moon and understanding the seasons and understanding how to call upon the forces of nature, various chanting, there are rituals. It varies from country and culture to culture, but you will see a similar thread. I mean, if you see a shaman from India and then a shaman from Africa or a shaman from South America, you'll see that there's a link somewhere between them. So in these times, you know, we wear sweaters and we have to, but shamans are those who help you unlock, who help you now approach your life from an energetic perspective. Now, what does that mean? We hear this word all the time, energy, 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 everything is energy. Well, those who have experienced very real proof that everything is made of energy and those watching know that they have, no one can ever take that experience away from you. I call it your God experience, your great spirit experience, your oneness experience. You begin to see that all of this is made of energy. Now a scientist will say, yes, it is. Everything is, I guess, a pulsating atom and subatomic particles that are spinning and pulsating. But the shaman goes, where does that come from? And how do you work with it? And if everything is made of the same stuff, then we're all the same stuff, expressing ourselves differently in a physical world. So you've heard that expression, um, we are spiritual beings having a human experience. Mm -hmm. I tweak that one. We are spiritual beings having a very spiritual experience. Yeah. We are ascended beings having an ascended experience. So, Whatever you think about what's going on in the world, because everybody's got an opinion, whatever side you're on or not side you're on, you will have to be at peace within your own system, body, mind, and spirit to be able to have those opinions that you have and then accomplish whatever it is that you want to accomplish using those opinions and desires and trajectories. So what I do, and it goes across all different walks of life, I've had all sorts of people over the years come to me from every, you name it, you name it. Some people couldn't even speak English, but they then received the energy, right? So what is this shamanic practice? For me, I simply find a way or ways for you to break through the layers, shed those layers, that cocoon that you've been in while you are, you've been waiting to come out in some way. There are some people who don't want to come out right now because the cocoon is a shield. Let me just, you know, wake me till it's over, as the song says. Mm -hmm. Just wake me till this is all over. <sighs> but why would you want to be asleep? Well, because this is a nightmare, right? So why would you want to be asleep? Exactly. You're supposed to live the dream. You're right. supposed to awaken from the nightmare. Greatest song ever written, row, row, row your boat gently down the stream, merrily, 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 life is but a dream. So some people will say, well, that's great to, to know. That's wonderful, that sounds great. There should be a meme with a spiritual picture on it. Yeah, there should, but what you do with it will either make it cliche and meaningless, like love is the answer or peace is the answer. It's becoming cliche. Right. Is it still cliche considering what's going on in the world? You think that's still cliche, that love is the only true power, that love is the way, that peace must reign? So no matter what side of a fence, on top of the fence, you don't believe in the fence, you have to do your spiritual work, your inner work in 2021 more than ever. You want to ask me why? Why? <laughs> what else are you going to do? Exactly. Every single thing that you do, you're going to, you're, you are going to hit the spiritual wall. If you're an accountant, you're going to want more clients. 
you're going to want to figure out hmm, what's going on with my breathing. I wish I could calm down. I have some anxiety. So what's going on? And that person can be a shaman. You can be a shaman and an accountant. You're helping people come from light, from darkness into light. That's where the word guru comes from. So in Sanskrit, the words, two words, gu and ru, which means light, lightness coming out of the darkness. Someone who brings you from darkness into light, from the unknown into more of the known. I always say more of the known, not the unknown to the known, because it's all unknown. What do we really know? What I teach you is how to surf what you are experiencing now, surf. The waves come and they don't crash on you. You float in the ocean, wave comes, you see it. You're like, I wanna be on that wave. You get on that wave. Now, if the wave is coming too fast and it's going to crash on you, then you need to learn how to dive under the wave into the wave so the wave doesn't crash on you. So what I teach is how to surf the ocean of life, of experiencing yourself day to day. So that can be in a psychic reading. That's what I do on the phone. So I can speak to anyone anywhere. It's interesting how I've had to use my spiritual practices in 2021. In 2020, excuse me. I'm so used to being with people one-on-one -on -one or in large groups. You guys know how many people come to my circle two, three times a week. And we couldn't do that in 2020. So I had to find new ways of doing what I love. You had to find new ways of doing what you love. Some of you couldn't do anything. So that means it was time for you to go back in your laboratory. How are you gonna use this time that 2020 gave you? How are you gonna utilize things? So I teach you how to be more resourceful with what is happening in your life. I don't take you out. So I'm going through a divorce. I'm going through it. Someone died and I can't go to the grief. I am just recovered from an illness. I'm experiencing an illness. I had a bad breakup. Whatever this may be, I don't take you away from what is challenging you. I teach you how to dive under the wave and understand the rhythm and motion of the ocean and why it's there for you. So you're utilizing what's happening in your life currently more resourcefully, instead of saying, how do I get away from all of this and then get to that, which is what most healers tend to do. My core of my teachings is you cannot make anything wrong. If you resist what is happening, you are missing the wisdom of the universe that co-created this for you and with you. I can do more. Actually, <laughs> you have more questions. I think you even answered one uh, of the future questions. Um, okay. So when things seem, seem let me start over. Mm -hmm. When things seem uncertain or bleak, what are the behaviors or practices that people should do now to help them feel more balanced? Well, I just did it. I breathed. What was that? I just breathed. Like when you asked, I went, because oh, I really wanted to think. And I'm so, you know, it's become a pattern in me of taking a breath. I spent the first half of my life not breathing. <laughs> and I breathe. Oh. I don't think you can have enough post-its around your house that say, just breathe, take a breath. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Why that first? Well, how complicated do you think it needs to be to calm your system? Mm. How do you check for signs of life? If someone is passed out on the floor, there are two things you're going to check for. If they're breathing and if there's a pulse, so if you are breathing, I know you're alive. If you're breathing shallow, I know that there's some trauma. If you're not breathing at all, I know you're either dead or close to dead. If you're breathing really, really fast, I know that you've got some fear going on. These are all teachings of ancient shaman wisdom. All of that ancient wisdom, of course, is taken and now turned into self-help and transformational stuff. There is a root to all of this. So breathing has always been part of it, of ancient practice. So I teach people how to breathe. It's not a breath work that anybody else designed. It's the breath work that I design with you and for you as I get to know you and work with you one-on-one. -on -one. It's customized. What I do is customized, no assembly line. 
There's no formula that you're going to know about that I'm working on with you. It's important for me. My life is dedicated to individualized help. What works for that person is not going to work for this person. Just like certain foods are good for some people and give some people gas. The job of the shaman is to bring, first of all, the job of the shaman is to kill you and then bring you back to life and then kill you again and bring you back to life. That means that the shaman's job is not just to say beautiful, airy things to you. If you want that, as far as I'm concerned, find someone else. I'm not going to waste your time or certainly not going to waste my time, number one. And neither should you. We should all be that way. And the reason for that is you have to pierce through layers. You can get comfort from whatever you find comfort in. But when you're working with anyone who is a deep trance channel or a shaman, we are working on unlocking. And some of those locks are rusted over. So we can put as much oil on them to lubricate it, or we're going to muscle it out too. And so I'm going to make you look at your thoughts that are stuck to your head like a barnacle on a whale. And I'm going to pull it off and I'm going to show it to you and say, guess what? You are not your thoughts, but what is this? What is this here? And so my line of questioning is endless when I work with a person. So you have to be ready for some heavy duty stuff, but if your life is heavy duty and you're experiencing heaviness, then you're gonna to have to put some power into releasing yourself. So the takeaway is what people can do during this time. Number one is breathe, okay, meditate. Right. Why is it such a problem to meditate? There's great meditations on YouTube. You know something? I don't think that it's people don't know exactly what to do because you would ask this question generally, hey, everyone, how do you all calm down? It's like asking people who are too heavy for themselves. Right. So how do you think you lose weight? Let me ask you a question. If you want to lose weight, do you think you should eat more or less? And do you think you should healthy food or not so healthy food? Do you think you should move your body more or move your body less if you want to lose weight? Nine out of 10 people will say the obvious, move my body more probably eat healthier foods and probably eat less food. Oh, so you already know how to lose weight. So why do we have all these diet gurus? Why are you scrolling on Instagram and everybody's telling you how quickly in a week you can lose this when science will tell you you can't. So the point is, is that the idea of quick fixes is not what I do. What I do is when you do have a good spiritual practice, it will become a pretty quick fix. If you learn how to practice, how to breathe and when to do it, see, that's it. So everybody kind of knows how to lose weight. Everyone knows that you probably should calm down and maybe take a walk in nature or just breathe or you should meditate. The question is, why don't you? And that's where a good coach or good shaman comes in, a good healer comes in and breaks it down for you. The real reasons, not the reasons you just think, but the core, getting to the core of why you won't do something. You know how many people are watching this right now who have a talent, who won't do anything about it? And they'll have every reason, I'm not good enough, I don't have the resources, it's not the right time, I'll do it one day. And they're sitting on this great voice or this great artistic ability or this wonderful energy that flows through them. Everyone goes, oh, when you touch me, your hands are so healing. But they're not offering this. I dived into channeling. What made me become a channel or a psychic medium? Basically, I lost major people close to me who died. And through that pain and that spiral downwards and facing all the darkness and death and blackness and then bursting through, that's where this began to open and it continues to open. That is endless. It's not, it's just open. The door can open a bit and then it opens wider and wider and wider till there is no door at all. So it's a practice. It's not something you're gonna just, what I'm gonna teach you is something you're gonna just get a quick fix and you lost 10 pounds. I'm gonna teach you a new way to live so you don't go through what you're going through again in the way that you're going through it. So your reactions are no longer the same these two words, think about them, reaction and creation. Same letters. You stay in the reaction of something, spiral downwards. 
you react, but then you shift into creation. Just switch those letters around. Reaction will become creation. And then that's where you soar. That's where you fly. Isn't it amazing that breathing is about letting go, taking in and then letting go? The most human function is to take in and to let go. If you don't do that, you're not alive. The most basic human function is I got a rhythm, that drum, that beat that's happening inside of you. So we're all musical beings. We're all to a certain degree psychic beings. I teach you how to open the crown chakra. It's a real thing. When you do that kind of work, it becomes very clear to you. When you say, where was, what was I doing all this time? So whoever is watching this, this is the time to begin a new program. This is the time. So I'll teach you how to do that. And you know, you can reach me here on my, here, whatever social media you're watching, you reach out to me on my website or on Instagram, I'm Psychic Riz the Wiz, or if we're Facebook friends, then I'm there. But there's no reason to wait. Don't wait for politics to be the way you want it, religion to be the way you want it, your relationship to be the way you want it, your body to be the way you want it, everyone in the world to be the way you want them to be. It's not going to happen. And if even by some stroke of magic, everything happens the way you want it to happen, then you're gonna start worrying, how long is this gonna last? So free yourself of those shackles. You came to this universe, this place, this planet to be you. That's what you came here to be. It's a school of creation, a school of love. So let's uh, dive into class. There's so okay, many. Okay, so I have another question for you. More questions. Yes. That was such so, a good ending. <laughs> Why is it important to learn to communicate yes. with your guides? Do you see that picture behind me of the woman with the octopus head? Some people think it's really scary. And maybe it is a little strange and scary, but I love it so much because what it said to me was, First of all, the artist who just said, I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna do my thing. But what I love about that is I've actually seen spirit guides that look similar. Who are the spirit guides? Every culture has mentioned some presence around every being that is a guiding force, a whispering of advice. Ancestors, they call them, spirit guides, the watchers, the universe, the higher consciousness. So the great mothers or fathers, angels, guardian angels. I just use the word spirit guides. That's my teaching. Everyone has felt at some point in their life, I was guided to do this. I thought of this person and suddenly I saw their sister who I haven't seen this person in 20 years. And there's their sister in Trader Joe's, you know, or walking down the street. The guides are all around you. Every person has spirit guides. I've never met a person that didn't. I've seen homeless people with spirit guides around them. That's my reality and my particular experience as a human being as I began to see energies around people that I knew were not them. Then when I would do readings, I began to hear a name. So some spirit guides that come through me, like in my book, The Nine Keys, each chapter is channeled by me. I leave my body by going into trance the spirit guide steps in and speaks, and they dictated each chapter of the nine keys. Each chapter is about a different aspect of life, the key to healing, the key to change, the key to home, the key to humor. And those guides, many of them are well-known people in history. And there are a few good trench channels in the world that do relay those messages. Now those are big teacher guides, but everyone has personal spirit guides. And that work as a psychic and as a channel, I'm very interested in helping people to connect to that because it directs your, I want to say it directs your receiving antenna. And then when through the meditative work and the healing work that I do with you to help you learn how to calm your mind and open your inner ear, this is the third eye. Well, there's a third ear. That is the deep lis listener. The guides, many of you know Chief Red Eagle, 
you know, Phineas, you know, Merlin, you know, these different guides that I channel and their energy is so strong and powerful, especially Red Eagle. And yet when Red Eagle comes into my body, his touch is as light as a feather or a baby's pinky touching me. And you would think with that big voice that Red Eagle has and the big energy that it would be like a tsunami or an avalanche. It's quite the opposite. I have to be completely in my feminine energy. I have to be completely vulnerable, almost to the point of where I feel I could cry. And that's the opening where they gently come in. And then once they're in, they take over. Now, I don't really teach trench channeling that you have to basically be with me for years to do that or marry me as you did and you do it now, <laughs> which not many people know what a good trench channeling you are. You should talk about that more, by the way, or do it for them. True. Uh, right? Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about that. <laughs> right. So I help you to receive the messages from them. I help you to learn how to listen. I help you to connect the dots. You know how people are seeing numbers a lot more? 10 years ago, no one was saying, I just saw 333, or I see the same numbers, you know, 717 all the time. No one was saying this 10 years ago. Why is it catching on? It's not that it's catching on. People were always experiencing it. It's just that we have kind of more screens around us to be able to flash that number to get our attention more. So we're seeing it actually more. But I've literally been walking down the street and see my numbers on a license plate in chalk on a sidewalk. You know, I'll, I'll get a ticket for the parking lot and the parking lot ticket will have that exact sequence of numbers. So what does that mean? I think it's the universe giving you a little nod and a wink going, hi, we're with you. You're in the right place at the right time. Don't worry, we got you. Your guides can give you lots of information. A few people who've worked with me over the years did become, um, in a sense, channelers. They're not trans channels. That's a very specific thing to be able to leave your body. There's only a handful in the world who can do it very well. But you certainly can receive messages and relay them, write them. So I will teach you how to do that as well. And can we talk a moment about trauma healing? Because that's a big part of my work. That yeah, people... actually, what I, that's perfect that you're going to say that. What I was going to mention was the different services that you offer. So let me just jump in and say that really quick, and then oh, you can okay. jump into that. So if anybody would like to have just a 30-minute quick reading, he does do that for people who don't uh, want to do anything in depth, just a fast reading. And he just kind of does a, an in-depth, but touch and go kind of session. Yep. Uh, it's over the phone. And also there's uh, the one hour session that he offers. And, yes, so it goes half hour, one hour, and then right. there's long-term spiritual coaching. So you don't need to live in LA. Right. We're on the phone with a spiritual reading coaching call helping you to untangle things. You don't need to be sitting in front of me for that work. The energy is very potent and the knowledge is very deep and the insight to what's going on with you personally is very extensive. So we basically, we do a program either a weekly call or two calls a month for a few months to help you move through whatever it is that you're moving through in your life currently or what you want to open up or what you simply want to understand. You want to develop your own intuitive or healing abilities. I can do that with you on the phone as well. Right. Yeah. A lot of healers also work with you and uh, people who have their own practices and they want sometimes to just go deeper or freshen up or see if they can expand and they need a very experienced shaman to go in and really help them to find I, deeper. Of course. It doesn't matter if you're not, if you are a professional healer, I have worked with some, some of the biggest out there um, because even if you win Wimbledon, you still, they still have a tennis coach. Even the heavyweight champion of the world or the top MMA fighter, they all have coaches because we watch every single thing you do and take it apart so that you have a more flawless practice and a flawless ability to help others. And you don't even have to be an energy worker. You can come to me and tell me you're a gymnast and you've never touched a crystal, but you want to become a better gymnast. Then I get into what is your mental game here? How are you connecting to your body? That's what a true shaman does there is no limit it's helping you understand how to create your reality also sunday nights at 7 p.m pacific standard time yeah the circle is on zoom right so anywhere in the world 7 p.m california time pacific standard time minimum and so you have to sign up in advance it books very fast yes everyone listen you all you've sent me so many messages i'd like to join the circle tonight 
I love you for saying that, but you know the circle is sold out always in advance. It's not like the old days where you can walk in. Huh? Yeah, it has to be in advance. A lot of people try to get in last minute, but um, it just, you know, we have a limit on how much. Yeah, we have a limit because we want everyone personal to get messages. At the circle, you get personal messages, sure. I'm ready while to go. Trash channeling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. While channeling, you'll get a channeled message. You can ask a question on anything that you like. And the great thing about the circle being a group experience is that you're with kindred spirits who respect and understand and want to understand channeling more and are open to getting messages. I've had family sit in on the Zoom call, you know, and um, now we have people from other countries coming in. Right. Over a decade of these circles. And one of the things that, one of the bright sides or one of the gifts that this experience of the lockdown gave us was we had to become more global. And the work, we, you know that we've always wanted to bring the circle online, but we just never did it. And now it's all over. Right. All over. Uh, we, we yeah, know. I mean, we used to hold four retreats internationally every year and take you to everywhere from Japan. Egypt, to India, India, Japan, Ireland, Ireland. Uh, places, the so desert. We'll definitely get back to that once uh, COVID lifts. Uh, but what we're going to do, what we have been doing is offering as many online services as we can. So the last thing I would like to mention, you already mentioned uh, the Nine Keys book, but I'd like to mention a series that we put together, you and I. Oh. Uh, it is the Nine Week Program. It's it's a course that you can watch forever online. online course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a nine week course. Uh, we take turns every other week and we cover a series of spiritual foundational practices, understandings. Uh, we give personal experiences, we give you tools and uh, you can watch them all in one sitting or you can do them as a workshop every week. And yeah. so that you way can of the seer. Yeah, the way of the seer. The seer is learning how to look more insightfully at your life from a spiritual perspective, how to open your third eye, develop a deeper meditative practice, become a better channel of your own energy and align yourself, calm yourself and reset yourself. And that's nine weeks. So it's nine videos that you get. So each week a new video is sent to you and then you watch it and you can watch it again and again and again, and also do some of the things that we suggest and then you're ready for week two. So it is really a great and very, I think it's very comprehensive. It's not like two or three hour videos. So you actually right. have the time to watch these um, these modules. So you can sign up for that by sending us a message. you can watch them all together. They're available to watch yeah, all You can together. binge watch them. <laughs> you can binge so, watch them, that's right. Yeah, you can, why not? And there's gonna be more, but right now that is the number one thing I recommend is what a great way to start 2021 is that you have a course that you can access. You don't have to schedule with me. You don't have to go through a lot. You go on the website, you buy the course, and now it'll just be sent to you. And then you can study. So to wrap up what we offer, and I also am a life coach uh, slash shaman, and we both do trauma healing work. And I work online the same as Riz uh, on, with phone sessions and the such, and I'll list my website below. But overall, what we offer is a way to stabilize your life through these times. And we have been doing this for so long that by the time now we are in the midst of this turmoil, we mm. get to the bottom of it with you. So you can learn how to navigate, how to live through them. We teach you how to just work around these big giant energies and not be afraid. We teach a non-fear-based, non-dualistic approach. It is our own approach. It's directly uh, channeled from the guides. So this is no dogma. This is uh, not a uh, prediction by date, prediction by time, uh, like urgent call. This is an eternal. We'll be doing this until we're 80. We are literally just showing you how to live a balanced and peaceful life so that you can move forward and be as healthy as possible and as successful as possible, no matter what is happening, no matter what system you're in, yeah, no, no matter, matter what, what, what dimension you're in. Mm -hmm. That's very important that you said that is that you have to hit that place in your life where your life is no longer about uh, what's happening in the world. Of course, you keep, you're a human, you're going to be aware of it. But to what extent is it harming your nervous system? You can be productive and a productive member of your society or the things that you, your community, 
without you being completely stressed and filled with anger or any kind of negative draining energies. So this is self-care in the highest form for as far as I'm concerned, this is we are taking care of our own front yard. Gandhi had said, you know, if everyone took care of the front of their house, swept in front of their house, the whole world would be clean. And then if you have extra energy, help the person next to you. And this is what that sense of community now is about, about those who are really interested in a deeper f form of self-care as, as what they are actually contributing to their families, to their significant others, or simply to the world. And remember that fear and anger stresses the body out and lowers your immune system. Of course so, it does. So we will teach you and talk to you about how to raise your immune system and raise your vibrations. So there's ways that you can understand what's happening in creation and co-creation with everyone on the planet without harming yourself. And you also could be a lighthouse and teach other people and share the light, share the wisdom, and we'll show you how to do that. So you can keep your family healthy and keep the people you love also healthy. But Riz, I just wanted to thank you. Um, I don't think in 10 years we have ever, ever. Why do you always say 10 years? It's close like to 13 years. What was that? You always say 10 years. It's close to 13 years. I know. I always just say 10 years. I round it off. But can I tell you, we've never, ever done an interview like this. We've never, I've never asked you questions, <laughs> but I love I that we're doing that it. I'm in like two rooms away from you, but this was the only way we could figure out how to actually <laughs> do it. It really works well. So well production like value. <laughs> yeah. Well, everybody that knows us um, already and has worked with us in the past, a big hello and a big I love you from us here. I miss you guys. I mean, I can't wait to do when all the smoke clears and it's safe for all of us to have a circle in person. Of course, we're right. going to do that. But in the meantime, I'm still here for you. Right. We'll see you soon. Thank you so much, everyone. God bless. And until next time. Namaste. Thanks, son. I'll see you in the kitchen. Bye-bye.